about a third of my business comes from YouTube. How much time do you spend on it? Like how many hours a week? Probably two. Today we're talking about seven things we wish we knew when starting YouTube. Matt Gouget here with Mountain West Financial. I want to make this. I've been doing this for almost a decade. We're talking like hundreds of thousands in revenue per year mm. from YouTube. If you look at it like a media company, it's a whole different way of thinking. 100%. The building community aspect of YouTube and being able to to network, it's unlimited. What have you now discovered about writing good titles and making good thumbnails? Welcome back to the Think Media Podcast. Sean Cannell here, and I'm super fired up because today we're talking about seven things we wish we knew when starting YouTube. These are going to be some great tips for going to the next level, or if you're just starting and how do you get your first or next 1,000 subscribers? Our guest today, Matt, the mortgage guy, has 21,000 subscribers. So if you're a business owner, a service professional, you're looking to get more leads, clients, but also what are the other benefits of starting a YouTube channel? This is going to be a powerful conversation with some tactical tips. Matt, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, man. It's uh, it's an honor. So give us a quick rundown. When did you start your channel? What is it you're doing over there? How long you've been doing this? I've been doing this for almost a decade. Wow. And uh, when I look back and I see the number on my YouTube channel, like 997 videos, no one, it's mostly long form. I realize like that's a ton of work. Uh, But honestly, it hasn't felt like work because when I started doing it, um, I was recording it to save myself time. I wasn't recording it to create more work for myself. It was if I get the same question 65 times, if I record an eight minute video and then somebody says like, should I pay points or how does a mortgage escrow account work? I can send them the video versus 10 minutes of my time repeated 65 times over. So um, yeah, it's been a decade. It's been a lot of fun. That's incredible. And if you were to list the benefits, I mean, have you got business? Has it raised your revenue? Has it led to opportunities? It's It's been huge for business. And that's where whenever I talk to somebody about starting YouTube, whether it's a real estate agent or mortgage or any business for that matter, they're like, that's amazing. You know, in 2021, you got 280 long form leads that generated a bunch of clients and and I don't have the exact numbers in front of me, but we're talking like hundreds of thousands in revenue per year Mm. from YouTube probably accounts for about a third of my business in in the mortgage business. When I started, um, of course, like anything else, it starts slow and it's one lead, then it's two leads and it's 10, then it's 20. um, And it didn't all happen immediately. But quite honestly, that wasn't even the goal of it. The goal was creating content that I could use to help educate people that I could, you know, scale my answers like I talked about rather than repeating it 65 times. And then over time, um, I learned, wow, this can create some business. Uh, A funny story too. I think I recorded videos for six years before I even started thinking about titles or thinking about thumbnails. Wow. So six years of videos with no thumbnails. Yeah. So you talk about somebody who just pressed record and just did it without any intentionality. That was me. Yes. And so anybody who's looking to replicate it or do it and they're like, well, you know, mortgage videos are boring or real estate. What do I talk about? Like, trust me, it can be done better. It can be done faster uh, than the guy who just pressed record and fumbled around for six or seven years before any intentionality was plugged into it. Yes. I love that because that's the power of a conversation like this to get to learn from your mistakes. And so I think in part one here, we're going to go through these seven tips And then in part two, you might ask me some questions about where do you go to the next level to go from 20,000 subscribers and beyond. So number one, I wish I knew that thumbnails and titles matter. I just started by making content with no plan. You already said that, but what have you now discovered about writing good titles and making good thumbnails? Well, that's the thing too, is I always was making content that I felt was valuable. And and the whole goal was like, how do I help people? Because I know if I help people and add value, of course, it's going to create business opportunity. And what I realized better late than never after six or seven years that first somebody has to actually find the video Mm. and to find the video, it has to have a title that people are searching for. And if they're, you know, not searching, but they're interested in mortgage type content and they scroll and they see eight different thumbnails, the guy with no thumbnail at all, or whatever the algorithm chooses to be a thumbnail is not going to get picked. So I wish I would have known that when I started just because, you know, especially when you're getting started, And it's probably for some people discouraging Mm -hmm. to have eight views, 11 views, 14 views. And so, you know, everything speeds up. And and if I wish I knew that before, if nothing else, just to be able to get more feedback. Yeah. Because the more people that see it, the more feedback you get. 
And if I had one video getting seven views, one getting 11, who knows if one was exponentially better. But then you create titles, you create thumbnails, it gets in front of more people. Okay, this one got 67 views. This one got 450. This one resonated better. This one probably had a thumbnail that people were more likely to click on and, and all the stuff that I've learned since. It's a powerful tip. And not only do titles and thumbnails matter, but we're also living in a new era where AI is making coming up and writing good titles easier and even graphics with uh, thumbnails from AI tools. So you got they matter big. You got to learn them. But the good news is it is figure outable and there's better tools than there ever was before. But number two, you said you wish you spent more time on planning and a game plan. Your only plan at the beginning was winging it. Right. What have you learned about the difference between just winging it at the start and how you maybe prepare for a video now? Right. Still a work in progress, by the way. <laughs> right. Ten, 10 years in, I can't wait to ask you some questions around it because I, I'm trying to create more valuable content, more, more content that um, actually adds value to the viewer. It retains viewership, not just because I want to see the metric on YouTube, but because that is an indication that, that people are finding value in it. Um, and so what was the question again? Yeah. I mean, when you at the beginning, what was it like when you'd shoot a video, just oh, kind of make a concept of, right. And that's the thing about somebody like me, I'm in mortgage and I work and do mortgage every single day. It's easy for me to talk about because it's what I do every day. And so if there's a question that gets asked or a subject that I want to speak on, I have the ability, you know, it's a blessing and a curse to press play and talk about it for eight minutes. Mm -hmm. But what I've learned and honestly, what I'm working on right now more than anything else is okay, here's what I want to communicate. Here's a common question. How do I create a great piece of content that keeps somebody engaged, answers all the questions? And, you know, the stuff that I think media puts out is, is gold. Hmm. And I've listened to some of that. I've got to implement that now is to take the time to just make it incrementally better. Maybe it's got one or two revisions and that you know, incrementally better video is going to not only perform better on YouTube, but the overarching goal is just provide more value and, and help more people. Yeah. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So planning, just a little bit of planning can go a long way. Number three, though, things you wish you knew back when you started. I wish I knew how powerful a tool it was to connect to people. Expound on that. Oh my gosh. I'm here at an event where I'm talking to people that I've, you know, connected with. You're like a past. celebrity here. Right. You're a superstar in it, this one yeah. panel at a time, which shout out to Michael Zuber, by the way, we're recording this podcast on his studio with Heartfelt Productions at an event in Las Vegas. You're one of his guest experts. And the reason I know you is because you've blown up, not just your channel, but also with him. Anyways, to give some context, it is wild who you are in this space. Probably people coming up to you, they recognize you. Right. And it's like, I, I have to, I'm taking notes in my phone because it's like, Hey, we talked, you helped me with this deal in Florida. You know, oh, Hey, we talked a, a year and a half ago and I'm planning on doing something. It's probably gonna be in the next couple of months. Um, it's really, really cool. And so the, the building community aspect of YouTube and being able to, to network it's, it's unlimited. And for the most part, when you think about, you know, mortgage originators from 30 years ago, they're going to local networking events and, you know, they're, they've got a network that's, that's constrained by, you know, a few miles. And now I'm able to do business with people across the country, create con connections and create a community, um, where, um, that probably wasn't ever possible. And so when I first got started, I didn't realize the power of that, hmm. um, which still blows me away. Question for you for someone in mortgage specifically, how hard is it to do nationwide business if you're here in the U S versus if you're only able to be like a local agent or only certified in one state, have you gone through the hoops? What does that look like? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's really a, a company specific thing. And for me, I was only California mm. up until 2021 and the growth of YouTube, the nationwide, you know, inquiries and leads and, and business that I was leaving on the table was one of the reasons, you know, to make the move in 2021. Um, so it's not to a company that does nationwide. Correct. Got gotcha. Correct. Yeah. And so, um, even with that being said, the cool part about mortgage is that like with a real estate agent, you want someone that knows that neighborhood really well, knows what businesses are on every single corner, knows it street by street and all the different schools with mortgage a company or a, a, a state as big as California, 
you know, I still captured quite a bit of business where whether it was Sacramento or the Irvine or anywhere in California, you know, I could write that loan. Um, but even for a real estate agent, I know real estate agents that crush it on YouTube and they're local. They just mentioned the word Sacramento 60 times. Mm. And so the, how, you know, technology is smart. I don't know how it all works, but it's pretty dang smart. And so it's, it's putting that in front of people that are looking at buying real estate in Sacramento, moving to Sacramento. What's great about this neighborhood in Sacramento versus that one. Um, and so it's, it's definitely possible, but, um, you know, to answer your question, it's, it's not terribly difficult. And honestly, honestly, that's the trend. I've seen more and more people in the mortgage space go from, I'm your go-to person in Tennessee to, oh, by the way, now I'm licensed in California and Idaho and Texas and and Florida. I love that insight. So number four, you say, I wish I knew what would resonate with people instead of like this spray and pray approach. What do you mean by that? Well, I think that, you know, that probably goes back to just me winging it and not doing as much research Mm -hmm. because in the very beginning, it was just, if I got a question, I would answer it and I'd answer it behind a camera and be like, yeah, maybe that's something other people are interested in, yeah. not realizing some questions are really, really niche. And some questions are just really specific to seven people across California where, um, you know, me wishing that I knew what would resonate is probably me wishing I did a little bit of more research into what's something that's going to help the most amount of people. I'm going to concentrate on scenarios like that, that I've seen in the past and yeah. lean on, you know, all my mortgage experience to answer that to, to, you know, the masses. That's great. Yeah. We say you always research before you press record and research is a skill because coming up with the right video topic. And now that you have as much data as you have, have you noticed when you look back over your library, you're like, Whoa, some of those have tens of thousands of views and some have hundreds. Right. And so you start seeing different topics, no doubt about it, resonate at different levels, just purely based on the topic, not necessarily based even on how good the content is. Exactly. Yeah. I've got some old videos that I don't think are that great, Yeah, but it just happened to be like, people want to know how escrow accounts work. Mm -hmm. And I've got a video, how do escrow accounts work that I want to share this story because I I think it's really, really cool. Um, Not only is it continuing to get something like 3000 views a month and it's got 60 or 70,000 views, a boring topic, like how do escrow accounts work with a, with a mortgage. I got a call the other day and this girl says, I'm actually in a training and our sales leader uses your video for our training. Not even mortgage advisors. This is for insurance. We don't necessarily deal with this, but it's something important for us to understand. Your video does a great job of explaining it. And again, not the best camera in the world, not the best you know structure to the video. I was winging it for totally. sure. Yes. But I explained it in simple terms. It resonated with enough people, so many people that it's literally used in trainings to help insurance agents know like, this isn't your lane, but just so you know how escrow accounts work, yeah. watch this video by Matt the Morris guy. That's wild. Yeah. The right topic at the right time can lead to exponential views on YouTube. And actually, uh, Thick Media Podcast, one of the things we go deep at at our event, growwithvideolive.com is research tools for identifying the best trends and topics for creating content. And uh, that's coming up soon. And you can check out show notes to all of, of course, Matt's stuff, all the topics we talk about, as well as get your tickets for growwithvideolive.com. But number five, I wish I knew the impact that YouTube could have on my business so that I would have spent the appropriate amount of time, energy, and effort to make the best product possible. If I'm understanding this, you're saying, if I knew then what I know now, I would have went harder. I would have invested more. Thousands. I would have taken it more seriously. For sure. Because, it because you know, if you look at, you know, any business, and, and I'll take mine specific, about a third of my business comes from YouTube. Wow. And I'm spending immense amount of time with certain partnerships or certain aspects of my business that might be 2% or 4% of my business. Mm. So if a third of my business is coming from YouTube, I should be spending you know, yes. hypothetically somewhere near a third of my time on that. But how much time do you spend on it? <laughs> this, this is part of our counseling session. It re- really very little. Like how many hours a week? Probably two. So two hours a week is what you've been doing over the last nine years. And that has led to 30% <laughs> of your business. Right. 
And then of course, so when you do the math and that's all, we always get smart when we look at the math and we're like, shoot, this thing is so fruitful. But what I also have these things over here that I'm grinding on, but they are not producing as much. Right. Yeah. And, and two hours is probably a generous estimate, even wow. though like, you know, 40 hour work week, I'm good at math. You know, it's, that's 5%. Um, it's probably less than that because, you know, part of the blessing and the curse, like I talked about is it's something I do all day, every day. And so I don't have to necessarily prepare yeah. to be able to talk about it. You just, you turn it on, drop, you drop, tell you what's your schedule, one a week or? Um, currently it's been two long form a week and then a live. Um, the live's really fun uh, because then, you know. And is it pretty much straight through because you're smart and you just riff it? On the live for sure. On the recorded. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. why I so tell you people, hit it. You hit record. You go for eight minutes or whatever. Yeah, and and literally like my tagline internally is one take no edits. I got it. So <laughs> you have one take no edits. Eight minutes is an upload. Eight minutes is an upload or ten or twelve, and then a and a longer live, and that's what makes up the two hours. Right, old thumbnail. Yeah, and and you know I've I've been through different phases, and it's like when you're less busy in business, maybe I'm spending thirty minutes where I'm like, okay, I want to talk about this, and so I'm gonna read an article. I'm gonna take some notes. But that's probably the exception. That's not that what I've been d- doing, you know, consistently. And so, you know, I'm, I'm honest with myself. Yeah. The content could be better with more preparation. The content, you know, for sure um, is, is why I'm here talking to my buddy Sean about uh, improvement. And I want to be empathetic to our community because when you're at the start, you don't have the 2020 vision that you have. You've attributed hundreds of thousands of dollars of income to this. So you look back and you're like, shoot. I would have went harder. I should have taken it more seriously. However, just because you're starting and there is uncertainty, think media podcast that will this work? Will this not work? Man, it, it's just such a important thing to consider. I'm not saying bet the farm. I'm not saying go all in. I'm not saying, you know, put your dependents, your kids or your spouse vulnerable. But I think there's a hundred percent of people I talk to like, man, if I would have, and I wish I would have risked a little bit more money, maybe hired somebody sooner, maybe hired an editor sooner, improved the quality sooner, because even what you've seen happen over the last years, a few small tweaks probably could have doubled your results, which would have been exponential. So what does that mean for you now? Like, are, could you crank it up a little bit podcast? Could you go in a little bit more, invest a little bit more? Imagine where that will put you a few years from now. hundred percent. And I want to say something real quick because I think it's important for people. You know, it's not all about revenue growth or, mm. or a, a certain result. If, you know, if I were to look back and say from 14 to 20, I didn't do thumbnails. I didn't do titles. Not as many people found it. You know, it took like, cause literally it was six years before I even thought about, you know, getting to a thousand subs. Yeah. Um, and then it went from. 500 to, to 20,000 in, in three short years or 500 to 10,000, I think in 18 months, what I did from 14 to 20 was not just a waste. I learned a ton. I got better at my job because in the very beginning, really the goal was, okay, I talked to somebody about this specific mortgage product. They asked about it. Two other people asked about it. I know people are curious about this specific product and how it works. I'm going to spend enough time to feel competent and confident to get on camera. And so like it forced me to do a little bit of research. And quite honestly, I I did more in the beginning because I didn't know as much as I know now where I can really wing it as much as I do. And so I got better as a mortgage loan originator. I got better at my craft because I was doing videos and I knew that if I was going to get the camera, I didn't want to be a complete idiot. Yeah. And so I would spend that time to, to research. I'd make the video and then all of the, even if nobody found it, the, the, the sense of like, this is somebody who knows about mortgage because they didn't just reply to my text. They sent me a video like that was powerful for real estate agents and referral partners and whatnot. So there's a lot of other valuable things. Ancillary it's, benefits. Yeah. It's but, not just about money. You grow the skills, the relationships, the connections. 100%. Wow. This episode is brought to you by StreamYard. StreamYard is our go-to platform here at Think Media for live streaming to Facebook and YouTube and for recording our video podcast. It has an incredibly easy to use interface for built-in branding, transitions, text lower thirds, and seamlessly bringing on guests. 
And they just added an awesome new feature called local recording. This allows you to take the quality to another level by separating out your audio and video from your guests, giving you more control over your content for later use. This feature is perfect for video and podcast creators. And so to get a special deal on StreamYard right now and to see all the features that are included, just go to stream with think.com that is stream with think.com so okay we'll hit these last two number six i wish i knew how to treat it like a business at the start what i knew if i knew then what i know now so what do you mean i mean that what you focus on grows mm. and if we attribute you know a third of the business to youtube or, or if you know we look back and it's like went from you know this to twenty thousand subs and so many thousands of views per month how how farther along would I be? Yes. If I said four hours a week, I'm going to dedicate to this. I'm going to make an extra revision. I'm going to make sure that, you know, there's some preparation. And even if I don't script videos, I can do bullet points mm -hmm. and I can put some thought into like, how am I going to make this super engaging to people follow along? Maybe I have, you know, a visual, which some of the complex subjects I'm like, I'm a visual person. I'm sure other people are visual people, you know, just more, intentional about things, which, you know, other aspects of my business, I'm very, very intentional. And that's a fifth of the business. And yeah. the, the thing that's driving 35% of the traffic in, you know, I'm just winging it because eh, it's worked, you know, some. Yeah. And it's like, it's also, you could think YouTube is like just a tactic or a lead gen source, but if the mindset shift would have been, this is actually a media company inside of my company. Yeah. And if I, if I had the mindset of starting a media company, how would I approach that? Well, you'd probably not think about you being the rugged individualist that is do wearing all the hats, but maybe you start thinking about what if I reinvested and built it up like its own little internal and very well that it, as we can see in the creator economy, it could become its own business, right? Educating maybe other mortgage agents and how to create content and, or you could have education products and YouTube ad revenue, as you know, Zuber doing a couple hundred thousand dollars a year besides being an investor and all of that different right, stuff. Right, so yeah. it is, if you look at it like a media company, then it's, it's, it's a whole different way of thinking. Right. A hundred percent. Yeah. And then that was a funny realization I had recently was, uh, I, I started getting feedback on, it's just not the end consumer that's watching my content. It's also real estate agents that could be partners that could be referring deals. It's also fellow loan originators that are just starting. It's a useful tool for them to learn. Mm. Maybe it's, you know, that's a recruiting tool in the wow. future when we're growing as a company. And so, yeah, it's, yeah, it's huge. Okay. Number seven, I wish I knew how to leverage and lean on others in the space to grow. Strong point. What do you mean? For, for six years, I just did it in the dark by myself. Didn't, didn't really like look at or, or receive feedback. And so I just didn't know what I didn't know. And then it literally was 19 or 20 when an agent who was making YouTube videos came across something and was like, Matt, holy crap. Like you've got years of videos. These videos are pretty good. People would actually be able to find them if you, and, and so it took somebody bringing that to me. Who knows how long I would have gone yes. be before I realized that. And so you know, I wish I would have known that because then that led to, okay, let's do a live stream together. And then, you know, Jeb Smith is doing cool stuff around real estate. I'll get on something with him and, and cross pollinate our audiences. Cause we're talking about the same stuff. We're trying to do the same thing with provide value and create, you know, some, some sort of environment where people take a big, scary subject, like a real estate purchase or mortgage and talk about it at a fifth grade level, which I think that's always been my claim to fame as a side note is making great, complex great, things. Simple. Great advice from my wife. She was like, nobody cares how much you know or how smart you are. Talk to everybody like they're my immigrant family mm. who doesn't understand, you know, yield spread and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. They just want to know the, the, the basics about mortgage. And so, uh, you know, I, as far as the, the collaboration stuff, like I've met so many cool people that are always anybody who's farther ahead than you in anything in life is, is always so gracious about, Oh, yeah. I did this. It worked. I did that. It didn't work. Like, can you take 10 minutes and watch the, my last couple of videos and tell me what you think yeah. and get honest feedback about that to, to help you grow. So I wish I would have known that earlier because, you know, I didn't even think to look 
who else is in this space doing videos. And now I can look across and see, you know, when the house you love and Javier Vidania and all these other people doing stuff in real estate and mortgage. That's so cool. Yeah. Leaning on others. I mean, if you think about what is the most expensive bill, what is the most expensive leak? What is the most expensive thing any of us are paying? I think it's the cost of not knowing. It's what we don't know that's hurting us. You know, even biblically, it's like my people perish for a lack of knowledge. And so that ends us ends up with us doing years, no titles, no thumbnails. Right. I remember I hired a coach um, because I bought a bundle of his books and it included a coaching call with him. And I was like, this is a good deal. I wanted to jump on this. It was a big stretch for me at that time, a few hundred dollars. And I just got a third party perspective actually on videos we were doing, but it was more of our blog and it was the exact thing. They were like, these titles are meaningless. There's no value based on them. It says like interview with this person, but, and, and it was like scales fell off from my eyes. What seems simple. And so uh, building your network by starting YouTube and making connections, getting to events, investing in yourself um, and leaning on others. You're right. People are very generous. And also with the idea of giving value, like as you always enter every, I'm sure you do the same. It's like, how can I give value? You start building a network where iron sharpens iron. Yeah. Such good tips. Well, as we kind of land the plane from here, that was seven tips that everybody listening can apply so that they can go further faster on YouTube. But now you want to go to the next level. Right. So you wanted to ask me a question or two. Yeah, I'd love to. Go I'd love for to. Because, uh, you know, been doing videos for 10 years. Yes. And I'll be the the, the first to admit you know, have no idea what I'm doing to a certain extent, right? Yeah. Paying more attention, thumbnails, titles, and, and I'm getting an idea around um, what I want the future to hold. I'm super excited. Shout out to, to to your speech and talking about the creator economy doubling in the next three years. Totally. So uh, so I'm excited about that because it's like, oh my gosh, I missed my opportunity. I didn't do it right the first time. You know, I've got the next three years where, where it's going to double. So there's still going to be plenty of eyeballs available for me to get in front of in in think media terms you guys talk about you know different levels to it and so i i watched something of yours where level one is a lot of trial and error and getting feedback and then you know with videos level two might be creating less videos but better quality content yeah i think that's where i'm currently at and so i'd love some advice around what you know e e even simple stuff that I'm still trying to learn, like what day should I be putting out content? And, you know, if, if I've seen through experimentation that eight to 10 minute videos generally, you know, land pretty well, um, what advice I guess going into that would you give me as somebody who's been on YouTube for a long time? Yeah. Done plenty of spray and pray marketing and, and winging it, um, to, to make higher quality content, you know, should I, should I go down from two videos to one? Is the algorithm going to be mad at me? Like, Hey, you're not putting out as much stuff. I know I've heard differing opinions on live as mm -hmm. well. Like live is going to hurt you if you're trying to grow your channel. I love it because it's like in this community building type atmosphere where I've got people here at the event. They're like, I'm on every single one of your lives. Yeah. Um, and so that was a lot. I get it. But like, let maybe, maybe start with, you know, for somebody who wants to put out better content yeah. and probably knows that realistically, it's going to mean less videos, like maybe one a week. Yeah. What would be your, your advice there? Well, I'm actually going to maybe approach this conversation different than you think I will. So knowing your situation and everything you've told me this far and how long you've been doing this, I think the first thing I would do is shift your mindset and have renewed commitment. The second thing I would do is write a new plan and we could talk about what that is. And then the third thing I would do is then execute that plan with renewed vigor, focus, taking massive action. So step one, I think one of actually, you have a massive advantage. You've been doing this for so long and you already have momentum and you're already established, but you also have some um, things working against you, which is you can get in a rut and your thinking has stayed the same for a long time. So I think actually the most important thing is to take a mind shit, mind uh, set shift from being a rugged individualist to a leader and a transformational leader of the goal of making a self-managing company inside of your company, which is your YouTube channel and your social media content overall. Yeah. So I think I would work on your mindset. I use some language there. I'd read, I'd read three books and I would read them in the next three to six weeks. I'd read buy back your time by Dan Martell. 
I would read Who Not How by Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan and 10X is Easier Than 2X by Dan Hardy and oh. forgive me, ben- Dr. Benjamin Hardy and Dan Sullivan. Those three books, which are all going to be about, again, shifting your mindset. And here's also the mindset. I would actually, rather than changing your schedule, I would, you need to hire help. And I would approach your channel. You've, we, we kind of danced around it. But the interesting thing is, my guess is you have money. I mean, not only do you have money, but like you also have money, like you have money, you could invest in this. So that's why it's a mindset shift rather than just, not that you're just trying to scrape all profit off of the top, but the mindset shift is now one of reinvestment. It's way overdue that she would have a video editor because even the videos you've been making could be enhanced if you just got a video editor. So that means onboarding a video editor. I would probably get an integrator, which is somebody that already has some expertise, but you're also going to have need to have a leader hat because you already have your main business to run and you want to develop this person. I would enroll that person in our program, Video Rakit Academy or VRA Elite and an admin person that starts taking off some of the mental lift that's maybe bringing you 10 title ideas. That's maybe handling the design and either they do the design themselves or you get somebody else on Upwork or Fiverr. So I would build a company small ninja team. And I would shift my mindset around that. The who not how talks about that. How am I going to take my YouTube channel to the next level? It's not how are you going to do it? It's who is going to help you take your YouTube channel to the next level. I would then plug into also the right mentors, not just for you, but actually more so for the team, for the business minded people in our community. A lot of times what they'll do is like Kelly Zitlow as also does mortgage. And she was basically a part of our program, VRA elite. It was a different name at the time. And she went to a few things, but really she sent her integrator to get the knowledge to manage her channels. One is consumer facing, one is business facing. So while she does her day-to-day stuff, it's now shifting into the mindset of a leader where I'm thinking hiring, even if it's just contractors or vendors and freelancers and Fiverr up work and things like that. I'm thinking the management of those people. I'm thinking about systems. And you already might be like, I'm thinking about a lot. So it's a, so that's actually why get the integrator. So season one, I think it's shift your thinking, reading those three books. Next step would be making a plan, realizing that, and this is at your stage, it's an interesting thing to say. You start talking about these tactics. Do I do live or do we do this? I think to execute season one and execute this plan, you need to just sometimes slow down before you speed up. So the reason to slow down is not because it's going to hurt the algorithm. In fact, those are kind of myths. Is two uploads better? Is one upload better? Is lives? You got to measure everything and it can affect stuff, but it has way more to do with the quality of the content, the quality of... So any schedules can work. One a week is great. Three a week is great. The WWE uploads like 500 a week, literally like 500 uploads a week. Wow. So it works for them. They're getting 800 million views a month. And so... Of course, there are, there's nuances to that. But again, looking for the magic number, what I'm being much more interested in, how do I make a, how do I scale sustainably and scale the quality of this? And in the book, 10X is easier than 2X. How do I also focus on your 20% genius, which is what only you can do? That's going to be delivering the content on camera. That's going to be also coming up with your next best camera uh, content ideas. So my plan, if I was you, would be twofold. It would be your plan to build a media company. It'd also be your plan to do less in your mortgage company. Like general delegation and leadership would be something I would be thinking about. And I would put that plan on paper. And then step three, I would execute on that plan. I think that there's you could absolutely maintain your channel by going down to one a week. It might be nice because you think about this other stuff, which is a massive headache. What do you mean? Hire somebody, go through applications, go through all this, budget it. Am I sending up a new entity? We got to carve out some time for that. So that's part of the plan. So maybe a reduction in schedule, which this is this is why this is next level thinking. After my talk, and we talk about the next three years are going to be the best three years in the creator economy. It's like, let's just go make a video right now. Like <laughs> yeah. what you want to do is get the dopamine, re, you know, and you already know how to do it too. So you can go get results right now, which is amazing. But everything we just t- talked about is the hard work that many people don't want to do, which is actually building an infrastructure Hire, when you hire somebody, it usually gets worse before it gets better. Right. It's like, because it doesn't just solve all your problems, it actually creates new ones. And so now you're going through kind of the messy middle of training. Like, is it even the right person? 
setting the right standards and expect- expectations and defining your values and principles, you know, all kinds of things like that. So it, it's, it opens up a whole new can of worms, but this is all very doable. It's all figure outable. And that's why the sequencing of, I think, again, heavily investing in first shifting your mindset and thinking about, okay, my approach to this, what's the plan for this? Mapping that out according to what you learned from those books and maybe some of future conversations. And then what I would execute on is, if you will, the fundamentals, great videos with great titles and great thumbnails and great topics. Um, but, but I wouldn't just throw your brute force energy at that because that will keep you stuck. That, in the words of uh, Dan Sullivan and Dr. Benjamin Hardy, is 2x thinking. It's more grinding. It's just grinding to edit a little better, make this tweak, but it's not going to lead to any exponential results. I think you're powerfully positioned to achieve 10x results, but you can't work 10 times harder. You already max out your 40 hours. You were telling me that. So you, you, it's leaning into leverage, which is definitely going to be team systems, thinking a little bit different. And if you slow down in a six to 12 month window, the following 12 to 24 months, year two and year three will be absolute insanity. And that I think is how everybody listening to this should be thinking is that sometimes it gets that whole idea. We overestimate what we can accomplish in a year, but we underestimate what we, what we can accomplish in five to 10. So in five years, again, what would you rather be doing? Just being more rugged and grinding more or would you much rather be like, man, I've got like three, four quality people around me. This thing's systematized. The quote is Frank Sinatra never sets up his own piano. So you need a team. And even if somebody, your, your live streams go to a new level, they start being scheduled, good thumbnail, good topic. Maybe you start bringing on guests, other professionals, an integrator that's working with your time. And I think Working at a company serving the nation mortgage wise, this is a radical mindset shift because there's that bucket over here, which is amazing. You're powerfully positioned to keep maximizing that thing. But to have this idea that, like, while doing that, I'm going to also build a media company and start like a separate entity and do the whole thing. That's the move, though. Yeah. And I think you do both. That's a transformational experience. And, uh, and I legit think you, you would 10x, uh, in, I think at 24 months, it gets interesting. I think again, really, I think you can, you can have an amazing year. There's a lot of viral things you could do in the next year, but none of the questions you asked, which was who should I hire first or whatever, you know, how should I set that up is actually, in my opinion, your most important next step. Right. Yeah. You gave me a lot more complex homework than I was looking for, but, <laughs> but, 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 but I, yes. I think it's, it's genius advice and that it's like, you know, part of the thing that I talked about, I wish I knew now, I wish I treat it like a business, like a business. And that is treating it like a business slowing down. And as much as like, I, I feel my insights, like, you know, getting a little bit queasy around all the building and all the works that I know goes into, you know, creating a team. Cause even in my mortgage business, same thing, like yes. high quality people around me, you know, an integrator while I'm the visionary and out there with the big ideas and just love talking to people. That stuff to me is the hard stuff. And so it's going to be the same with the mm-hmm. media company is like, you've got to do this hard stuff. But if I can, if I can look out, you know, 12, 18, 24 months and say, yeah, it's just going to come to you. The great idea. You're going to get to do what you really like to do is, you know, talk on camera so that you can impact hundreds of thousands of people and help them and get all this dopamine. Like really for me, the dopamine is the feedback. Thank you so much. Regardless of whether they worked with us or not. Thank you so right. much. This Powerful. is super valuable. It's exactly what I need. It's about impact. And uh, yeah, chasing impact, not income is, is one of my taglines um, recently. So I appreciate the heck out of, of that advice. And I'm, I'm definitely going to take it. And, you know, I got to keep reassuring myself, you know, being in a position where, you know, all of that minutia and, and, and business and structure stuff is like handled so that I can create one great piece of content every week yeah um is 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 gonna and be- let's simplify so after i mean because we painted a crazy picture but also to me it's thumbnail designer and it's video editor even if you're if you manage them mm. and eventually finding the right one so that even if you riff and then more planning on your part right so to your point it'd be blocking the time more planning on your part so you deliver better content maybe it takes you 18 minutes to deliver that editor makes it 12 and a half put some text on there, put some B-roll in there, puts a better hook in there, maybe some music at the intro, some better branding. 
and then thumbnail designer, and then the improvement of your skills. Everything I just laid out, you still want to reverse engineer back from your self-awareness. If you go like, well, okay, listen, I'm not really trying to go like create media company. You still, I think that the level you're at, it is irresponsible to not have a video editor yet. Yeah. I mean, and that was been part of the packaging, but I just think you look at, look at Cody Sanchez, look at Alex Ramosi. They're, they're, Content is highly edited. Yeah, which I've got, you know, piece mailed. Like currently it's being done by, by you know, marketing team at yeah. corporate. Okay. You know, and I've had in the past, you know, some some piece mailed Fiverr and, and Upwork type of uh, video editing done. Or even like whiteboard or digital whiteboard or share your screen and draw on tablet. And, and those are ways to level up the content. And that also, that could even be live. Do you yeah. do some of that stuff? I haven't done that, but share I've seen your screen. it. I've seen it, especially when you're talking about share your screen and yeah. tell me how much, so you start doing how much money do I make? Like, so you go, okay, you have 38,000, uh, it's this percent, this is how much you could afford. People watch that content all day long, but it's better because it's not just talking head. So editing visuals, vibe board, you know, that way, whatever, yeah, whiteboard, yeah. Yeah. vibe board, breakdowns show me some stuff pace morby this entity that not that you're doing that you know but like he breaks all that stuff down to me those would be power up content power ups for you which could be building a better studio yeah and honestly that is I, integrated I, with yeah, more tools i think what if if i was honestly looking at at my thing is one i'm just trying to get out a number of videos and so like the quality is worse because of that where i'm like let me think of an idea in four minutes so i can mm-hmm. record something and, and get something out so i can meet this three video a week criteria and then also you know just not blocking the time making the time because there's no such thing as like i don't have times like you don't make time sure but if if i made time to put some thought effort and energy into okay here's the idea i've got and here's how i'll present it in a way that will be you know whether it's whiteboard or something different just a matter of making that a priority i love it well i hope that was helpful excited to connect more always yeah. here to help and Sweet, uh man. Matt, the mortgage guy, Think Media Podcast. Like, share, and share this episode with somebody. Maybe you know a business owner, a real estate professional of some kind. Um, a lot of value here. Check out Matt's channels and social media in the link, especially too. Maybe you're looking to buy um, or refinance or something. Definitely connect. Growwithvideolive.com is coming up soon. Grab your tickets. My name is Sean Cannell, your guide to building a profitable YouTube channel. Can't wait to connect with you in the future episode. Talk soon.